Today we'll be stealing our own castle in Bannerlord in the most easy way possible without relying on joining a faction and then giving you a castle only if your relationship is high enough. But also after you capture the town or castle we're also going to go over how to manage it so you don't immediately lose it in a rebellion against you. But to do this yourself you're going to want to be at least clan tier 3 which will give you a party size of at least 100 and you're going to want to make sure that the troops you have are leveled up to at least tier 4. Now everybody's campaign map is going to be different but there's a few simple rules we can follow so that when we do get a castle we don't get completely destroyed. For example, this castle right here may be a fantastic castle to steal but it is on the border between three different factions. You've got the Sturgeons to the north, the Northern Empire to the south, and the Batanians to the west. So if you're making your own kingdom and you have a castle in a location like this, you're going to end up at war with all three of these factions at once. And then you'll have to pay them to make peace with you, and that's going to be an extremely expensive situation. The best castles to take in Bannerlord are actually isolated towards the edge of the map, deep within one faction's territory. For example, if I was to take Samira Castle, only the Kuze would declare war on me because all of the other factions are actually miles away from me and I'm protected by this massive lake and these rivers in between me and them. Also, on a more micro scale, there's a massive mountain surrounding my castle, which makes it a lot harder for enemies to access and respond to when I come to attack it or defend it. It's just a great place to grow a kingdom or empire from. The same could be said for the castles deep within Azerai territory. It's completely isolated from the rest of the map, with only two real entrances to anyone who may be at war with you. Secondly, how do we actually take the castle? Well, there are actually a few methods of doing this. The first method is about opportunity. Essentially, you're going to find a castle that has a low amount of defenders. Even this castle with 197 defenders is actually takeable if you have high tier troops. You can even wait nearby while one faction sieges a castle and then when they leave a low amount of defenders in it you can just take it back yourself. So before we can take one of Valadia's castles we need to declare war on them. So to do this just find any random bunch of peasants that are the same faction as the castle you want to take and then go ahead and attack them. In this case, there are 20 villagers. I'm just gonna go ahead and attack those and then that will be seen as an act of war. And now, as you can see, we're at war with the Valadian. So now we're gonna head all the way over to this castle and begin our siege. So we're now at the castle. It has 37 defenders because it was only recently taken and we can go ahead and besiege it. And now we're going to be building our siege camp, but we're going to want to look out around us because we'll probably get a reaction from Valandia. Oh yeah, look, so there's a force of 129 enemies coming towards us to try and stop us sieging the castle. Now what they'll usually do is that they'll wait nearby until they have enough forces around us to stop us sieging this castle. But I don't think anyone else is going to come, so it's just them currently, and we've built our siege camp. Now, if this was more even odds, I would suggest that you build a battering ram. But in this case, since there are only 44 enemies in this castle, we can just go ahead and lead the assault ourselves. Now, currently, my character has a party troop size limit of 142. And he also has various other skills and perks that increases troop party size further. But in most cases, you still will likely be outnumbered. So the best thing to do is to get as many high level troops as you can and obviously before the attack you're going to want to save the game in case anything goes wrong. But in this case I'm just going to send in my troops and also resolve the battle and as you can see we only lost 11 men, 26 were wounded and we have now got the castle prisoners into our party and we can also loot everything they had as well. And now the castle is ours. By the way, I'd highly recommend that you show mercy in this case because you want to manage this castle and not have them rebel against you. So show mercy, continue. Next, we need to go over to this party here. It's been a while. That's been waiting outside our castle and say there's something I'd like to discuss. 
our realm should make peace. And then we just need to offer them some money so that they can make peace with us. And he's happy with the offer of 55,000 gold and it will usually be around that as well. So just go ahead and offer him that and the barter is accepted. We are now peaceful with them and we can just say okay I've got to leave and now we have our own castle right here and we can go ahead and manage this. Secondly it's actually possible for you to take a town that's rebelled against its owners and the best part about this is that it doesn't count as you attacking another faction so you don't need to go to war with anyone you can remain completely independent and just have your own town and make loads of money from it. So essentially how this works is there's a chance, usually after for example the Kuzates have taken Taiao, but then Taiao has rebelled and created its own faction. It's also happened here in Varcheg, and we're quite close to Varcheg right now. So if I go and check, it currently has 453 defenders, and that's too many for me to attack at my current clan rank. But they've only just rebelled, so they're currently at their strongest. Alternatively though, if I travel over to Taiao, we can see what the situation is there. So here we are in Taiao, and as you can see, the city is currently under siege by an army of Kuzates with 277 soldiers. If we check the defense of the city, it says that there are 312 defenders. Now I don't think this siege is going to last because they're so even. So we're going to wait here for a bit and see if this siege actually continues or if it breaks up because they actually have less oh yeah yeah there you go because the kuzates have less men than the defenders inside they're not even going to bother sieging it this gives us the opportunity to come in and actually take this castle now so what we need to do now to actually siege the castle is be at war with these rebels so as you can see these two villages are already burning but there's a character down here with his own party it's actually about to attack some Kuzate soldiers. What we can do is go and run and try and catch up with him and just attack him and then we'll be at war. Hey, I don't think I know you. Peace to you, stranger. My name is Ragnar. May I ask your name? I'm Kayal. I have been chosen by the people of Tayal to lead them in their struggle against tyranny. Know that if you ever cross me, you will wind up as food for the ravens. I'm here to deliver you to my demands. Yeah, what do you want? I offer you one chance to surrender or die. Are you mad? I am not your enemy. I repeat, yield or fight. And now we're at war with them. Very well, expect no mercy. So as you can see, it now says that we've declared war on them just here. However, I can cancel that and then I can just leave. And we're already at war with them now. This party's actually in combat with them. So we're just going to go ahead and leave. And then we're going to come back to Taiao and we're going to lay siege to it. I didn't want to fight them because I really don't want to risk losing any men just before we do this. So about this point, we're going to go ahead and save the game. And then we're going to go ahead and lay siege to the castle. Besiege town. And now we're going to start building our siege camp. And at this point, you can actually see, even though we have half the amount of men, they have very low level troops in there to defend it. So we are actually probably going to beat them. So we're going to just build our siege camp and no one's there to attack us because this is just a tiny rebel faction. We've not annoyed anyone else. We've not gone to war with any other factions. Just this rebel one here inside the keep. In fact, people are currently dying of starvation in there. So we could even wait them out if we wanted to. So now we've built our siege camp, we need to build a few things. I would highly recommend just building a battering ram and then you can attack after that. But in this case, we actually have the opportunity to build a few different things because I mean, this siege can last as long as we want it to really. Now, as soon as this battering ram is built, we're gonna want to go ahead and pause. And then we're going to click on it and press move to reserve. And then we're going to start building ourselves a ballista. And then we're going to go ahead and fast forward the construction of these ballistas. And then we'll pause the game as soon as it's built and move it to reserve. Now the reason why we do that is so that these catapults don't destroy it as soon as it's been built. Now you'll notice that as we are sieging this city, the number of healthy defenders has reduced 
considerably, which means the odds are even more in my favor on the power level. We could actually also resolve this if we wanted to, but I'm not going to do that because that would not be fun in my opinion. Let's put the catapult in reserve. Oh, my wife has given birth. Svana has given birth to a healthy boy. <gasps> my goodness, at the siege camp. On the 12th day of winter, 1087, a child was born to Svana. There she is, fully geared in her battle outfit, just chilling out in bed there, child in arm. Jesus Christ, I'm like, is that mine? He's like, yes, you idiots. Can I touch it kind of like very tentatively poking the child well there you have it we are now a father beautiful okay so we have a trebuchet we have a ballista and we have a catapult and also we're going to redeploy the battering ram now we've redeployed everything we can now go ahead and save the game and then we will lead the assault battle brothers assault ballista is going to come straight up the hill here towards the main gates and we have two ladders flanking on the right and left it is going to be difficult though because as you can see their fortress walls actually line to the left and right which means they're going to be shooting from the side there which makes that attack extremely difficult. Put everyone towards the center on the left side of the battlefield it looks pretty bleak as well there's almost a kill box in the corner there when you're getting towards those ladders. So we're going to have to do as much damage as we can as our troops move upwards. Let's go ahead and move on. It looks like the enemy has built catapults. No ballistas for us to worry about right now. So I'm just going to come forward here and try and take out some of these troops as our battering ram moves up along the walls i can see some men along the edge just oh okay well that didn't work out very well did it what is this guy doing oh get wrecked he looks like he's trying not to fall off the wall let me give you a hand battle brother don't worry battle brother i shall help you get wrecked okay i can see the archers lining up along the walls now they're pretty low level archers i believe so i should be able to take them out pretty easily get oh mate do you see that dodge skill look at this guy who do you think you are mate take out these troops so my men can move up oh beautiful I have to aim a bit higher for these headshots I think oh right in the head we're kind of even which is good because they're in the castle and we're not I don't know how the battering ram is doing but there's a lot of arrows flying at me they have a really good perspective from where they're standing I'm going to give some middle support here to some of my men as the battering ram moves up with the flag there. There's a lot of men raining down hell on them. What I'm going to do is move up here and then I'll try and help my shield brothers in this assault on the main door. Oh, get wrecked, mate. And I have no arrows left. So hopefully we can get the door down in a moment. I've brought a lot of Sturgeon Axe troops with me. So we should be able to do this very effectively. We just need to watch out for the rocks falling from above. Okay, we've got the sword troops in the middle here. Not ideal. Okay, here we go. The axes are coming in. Yeah, we should be able to make short work of this door. It's going down really quickly. And no one's throwing rocks from above, which is a massive bonus. But I'm just waiting to see the shield wall on the other side of this. There's a lot of men on the other side of this wall. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yes. Get in there, battle brothers. Let's try and get out in the front. Overhead swings. Don't want to hurt my own men. But also, I cannot die. I really cannot die. If I can get out to the side here. Oh my god, there's a lot of guys. Oh boy. One down. Oh my god, I just took an axe to the face. Oh my goodness, there's loads of them. Come on, get him. We got him, we got him, we got him. <gasps> we managed to get the siege. We got through the gate, guys. I think they're shooting down on us. Oh my god, my men have got him from the top there as well. This is fantastic. This is going so well. Now we just need to get on the walls and clear the rest of them out. I'm going to get up here and help my men. As you can see, we're depleting their forces now along the walls. There's not a chance. My heavily armoured troops are absolute menaces in close combat. Look at them, they're just peasants. Just peasants. Die. Get wrecked, son. Kill the peasants. Look at them all. They're just. This is a slaughter now. 
Where are you going, mate? <laughs> He's just running, I think. Let me pick up this. Pick up this giant rock. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Right, I'm going to get this uh, spear. I'm just going to throw it at that guy down there. Watch this. Oh, I think that last guy there running to the Lord's Hall. There must only be a few men left. The castle is ours, brothers. We stand victorious. Yes, battle has been won. The defenders have pulled back and are mounting a last stand inside the keep. We will, of course, attack them ourselves. I can bring specific people on this battle with me to take back this castle. Look at them all. Get Rex. Oh my god. Come on. Get all these peasants. Come, brothers. Finish them. Show them that we mean no mercy. Okay, you're pretty good in combat, my friend. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to die. <laughs> Help me, brothers. Okay, thank God. He's dead. He's dead. Oh, my God. We went right into their bedroom and ransacked the place. Look at that. Battle brothers. Well, Done. We gained 90 renown and 25 morale for our victory. And we have actually captured this people. However, we have no qualms with the rebels here. So we're actually going to go ahead and let them all go. You thought, well, you're free to go. That's also going to level up our charm skill and our relationship with them as well. Oh, we also get 31 troops that we can put into the garrison of this castle too. And 156 prisoners. My god, that's a lot of men. And we also have the Spoils of War Battle Brothers. And the castle is now ours. The defenders are routed and it is clear that Tai Yao is yours. It is time to determine the fate of the city. So we have three options here. But again, we want to keep this city and hold it. So we're going to show mercy here. You have decided to show mercy to the people of Tai you can hear disgruntled murmuring among the troops who have been denied their customary right of pillaging. Payao has fallen to your troops. You may station a garrison here to defend it against enemies who may try to recapture it. So Tayao is now ours and so are its surrounding places and now, and now our goal is to keep it and make sure everyone inside the city is happy. The town is clearly going through hard times. People look malnourished. The buildings are poorly maintained. So now we need to manage our town. First thing we're going to want to do is appoint Svana as the governor. As you can see, Svana has a steward skill of 101. She also has a cultural background of Sturgia. It's almost like this was planned from the beginning. So what we're going to do is go to manage town. And then as the governor, we're going to select Svana. If you proceed, Svana will become the new governor of Taiao. Are you sure? Yes. As you can see, if I go to the loyalty here, the governor's culture is plus one because she has the same background culture. Now, the most important thing you need to look out for when you conquer a town is the loyalty because this going into minus can lead to rebellion. Currently, the daily change is minus three, which means it goes negative every day, which is obviously not good. Well, if we hover over it, it will say currently these are all the negative things affecting it. Now, down here under daily default, we have some different options. We're going to click on festival and game plus free increase to settlement loyalty. And that's going to increase the loyalty of the settlement, which is currently at minus three a day because they're starving. Now, as you can see, the food is currently zero. So in order to fix this, one thing we can do is go ahead and give them in trading rain, which is also good for us because they're so desperate for it that we're actually getting paid good money to give it to them. However, security is minus two. We can do something against that. So if we go to the keep and then we say manage garrison, we can actually put some troops in here. And I can now see over here on security, we're getting plus one to our security each day. There's also a nearby bandit hideout that's creating minus two per day. We can go and destroy that. Now me, the owner, has a Batanian background, which is different from this city's background. So I get minus three a day no matter what. So we can't do anything about that. So now we're gonna put a bunch of money 20,000 into this city and we're going to go ahead and cancel the construction of this 
And then we're going to go ahead and start constructing fairgrounds because that's going to give us plus 0.5 loyalty per day. Currently, the construction is really low because our cultural loyalty is negatively affecting it. We're then going to sell all the stuff we don't need and we're going to get 31,000 gold. And our villagers are currently still burning. So they will take some time to recover. We can also go to nearby villages like this one that produces fish. And they also have the default price for buying those products like this is six value so we're just going to go ahead and buy all of their fish that we can buy and then go ahead and leave and head back to our city in fact we can actually sort out the bandit hideout as well go and sort out this hideout my god look at this bandit hideout dude this looks sick dude this man is dodging those spears get wrecked we have the perfect overview of this campsite let's take these men out oh how did that miss you the trajectory on the arrows is actually very realistic. You have to aim just below their head to actually hit them. That's when shooting from above, that is. My goodness, I almost hit my own man there in the back. Whoops! Surprise attack! Get wrecked. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster appears out of nowhere and takes him back home. What do you think you're doing? I will battle you, brother. Oh, almost chopped his arm off there. Get ready. Right, let's head back to town and see how town is doing. There's actually a tournament on. That's good news. Now if we look back at Tyal, our town, you can see currently our militia is going plus four. Garrison is plus one. Food is plus two. And security is also plus one. On the Manage Town tab, we can also see the fairgrounds is now being built. And as soon as that's built, we'll actually be getting plus one loyalty instead of minus 0.63. But it will take some time because our construction speed is currently very low. Since one of our villagers has rejuvenated, though, it's currently producing food. And this one will soon rejuvenate and then it will get some food as well. So there you have it, Battle Brothers. We have captured ourselves a town and we are not at war with everyone. We still have good relationships. We can now join any faction we want or alternatively we now meet the criteria to create a non-imperial kingdom since we have clan tier 4 100 troops is easy to obtain clan independence and one settlement however if you do want to make your own kingdom i would highly suggest that you make use of the 1300 days or how much time you have remaining to amass millions and millions of dinars and make relationships with other clans that you plan to recruit later before you make your own kingdom and then you'll be in a much more powerful position to do so. But the next episode is going to be a live stream starting in a few minutes actually. So I will see you in that live stream and thank you so much again for all of you who have become Patreons and members of the channel to support this series. It does take a lot of time to fine tune these sort of detailed episodes but the live streams are very much just emotionally driven and a lot of fun so I like to do those a lot as well and I'm really really glad that I have so many of you requesting them because they're awesome to do and it's great to have you guys actually watching them. I'll see you there. Goodbye.